Good morning, Solar YouTube, and welcome to my off-grid cabin build site. My name is Will, and somehow I got a hold of 31 acres of trees and dirt, and I'm gonna be building a 20 by 40 cabin right over here on my property. And today I'm gonna go over what I chose to do for my off-grid electrical system. I recently quit my 12 hours per day sales job in Chicago, where I worked way too hard and I relocated to the beautiful Upper Peninsula of Michigan to get a little bit closer to nature. But while in nature, I definitely still want some modern luxuries, so I had to choose a solar system to run my operation. I chose to use the 12 kilowatt grow watt all-in-one inverter to power my cabin, and I'm currently using it as a power source while I build. Today in this video, I'm going to run through exactly how I set it up, give you some wire sizes, connection information, and show you how easy it is to do yourself. This system can be used in a normal house in the suburbs or out on a farm or way out off grid in the north woods set up in a trailer in the woods. So what we're looking at is a multifunctional split phase output off grid solar inverter and MPPT charge controller. It's an all in one inverter. I bought it from Signature Solar. They're based out of Texas. It can input 120 amps of solar, which is absolutely massive. To give you some perspective, I have six brand new 100 watt Renergy solar panels, and when they're all in direct summer sun, I get about six amps of input. It can output 12 kilowatts continuous and 36 kilowatts of surge. So it's a powerful machine and probably overbuilt for my 20 by 40 cabin. GrowWatt lists this inverter for use in a large residential or small industrial setting. You can definitely use this machine while connected to the grid. This would be done in pass-through mode where the grid power would simply pass through the inverter and power the house. And if the grid went down, then it could pull from the batteries as a backup power source. The only function this does not have is it will not send power back to the grid. So don't buy this if your plan is to buy a bunch of solar panels and try and make money from the power company. I'm using it right now in a purely off-grid setting, and so it's not seeing the very best use because I'm just using it to charge camera batteries and cell phone batteries and stuff like that. But once I have my cabin built, it will be used to power my well and my dryer and washer and whatever else I have running in my cabin. In the future, I would like to get an electric UTV and I would like to sell my FZ09, which is a gas motorcycle, and buy an electric motorcycle. So I could use those to get to town in the summer, all on solar power. And then in the winter, it's pretty much take a snowmobile to town to get stuff done or buy groceries. Um, and then in the summer, if I need to go somewhere a little bit farther, I can just take the Prius out. And if the Prius gets stuck in the mud on the driveway, I can use my Ford 755 to pull it out. So I should be pretty good with my vehicles and um, I can get away with minimal gas. Here's the actual setup we got going on. We've got our 12 kilowatt grow watt all in one inverter. We've got eight battle born batteries. That's our battery bank right there. And then we've got our breaker box, which is hooked up to, it's got two, two fuses on the inside right there, a 20 and a 15, but we're running the 20 amp fuse onto this outlet right here. So when this thing's turned on, we can actually charge drones and phones and it's uh it's live power for us i'm switching up to my iphone 11 real quick and i'm going to give you a quick rundown so i put in the title of this video that it's for beginners again this is my first system that i've ever set up so let me run through this with you real quick so what i did was i got six of these renergy 100 watt solar panels and to set up solar panels it's incredibly simple right you just pull this thing back and you have two terminals you have a negative right here and a positive. What you're gonna do is you're gonna wire these solar panels all together in parallel. So the positive of this end connects to the negative of that end. I've got a negative wire right here that runs under through the wheel well of the trailer into the grow watt inverter. So very simple. All these solar panels are in parallel. You got a negative end and a positive end that run into the trailer. The negative end and the positive end sneak through the wheel well right here. So I've got these two solar wires or solar cables and they run up into the grow watt. So underneath here, you've got a PV1 and a PV2, positive and negative, positive and negative. So you just run those two cables from the two sides of the solar array into PV1, positive and negative. On the grow watt, you can see that I'm getting 100 and about 10 volts input 
from the PV array. And input AC is zero. I went the wrong way, I think. There we go. PV input is four amps currently. In the user manual for the 12 kilowatt version, the typical amperage is 120 amps. So you would do 60 on PV1 and 60 on PV2. So if I'm getting four amps right now, and I know I can typically get six amps when the sun's right on these bad boys, then I could pretty much scale this system up massively from where I'm at. Let's talk about the batteries real quick. So very simple, what I got going on is eight 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries. I have four on the top in series and four on the bottom in series. So just positive and negative, positive and negative all the way across on these two rows. I have a jumper right here and it jumps them there and another jumper on this side. So these two rows are in parallel. It is technically a 48 volt system, but on the grow watt, um, We'll set it at about 53.1 when this thing is charged up. So it's a little bit more than 12 volts each. What I did for the connections is I cut eight inch pieces of two slash zero welding wire, which is a bit over spec for what I needed, but we had it laying around in my garage. My dad had a whole spool of it very conveniently. I bought some two slash zero connectors, which all it is is a little open end on this side and an end that I can bolt through on this side. And so I cut these wires crimped them down using a crimp tool. So this one I bought on Amazon for, I believe it was 12 bucks. And the purpose of it is literally just to crimp wires. You just put the crimp inside of there with the wire and then hit it with a hammer. You put it on some nice like concrete or something. You just hit it with a hammer a bunch of times and you can crimp the wire down. This thing, I wouldn't say it's like the best quality tool ever. I feel like it's about to break if I do a couple more of them, but it worked for my purposes. On the positive side of the battery bank, we've got a positive wire that runs up to the positive side of the grow watt. So the positive terminal comes through currently a 120 amp breaker fuse. And the only reason I have 120 amp on here is because my 150 broke physically during transportation. Um, so I'm gonna order 150 because I figured there should never be more than 150 amps of current coming through this into my 150 amp breaker box over here. I have a disconnect switch. This is super simple. You can just buy one of these on Amazon. And currently it's on on. If I go like that, it goes off. Now the connection continues right up to the positive side of the grow watt. That is the only thing plugged into the positive side of the grow watt inverter. On the negative side of the battery bank, we have a ground wire that runs across the ground and it comes up and it just goes into the ground side of the grow out inverter. So positive to positive, negative to negative, super simple. The next thing I'll talk about is the AC input. It's super simple. You have a hot one, a hot two and a ground. So you can take split phase from the grid, plug it in and it will charge up your battery bank. Or you can go pass through mode and you can hook up your grid, pass through the inverter and power your house. And then if the grid goes down, you can use your backup battery bank to power your house. The next thing is the AC output. This one is also very simple. You've got hot one, hot two, and a neutral. I'm going to turn off the inverter right here. I'll sneak up over here and I'll find the AC output and I'm gonna turn these off. So there's no AC power going through here. Now, even though the inverter is off, and the AC output is off, I'm gonna treat this like it's still hot and not touch anything with my fingers. But I am gonna break it open real quick and show you what's going on inside. On the bottom of the grow lot, we've got the AC output and it looks like we've got red for hot one, we've got black for neutral, and then white for hot two. And so you can trace that up here. It comes through this hole right here and red goes to hot one white goes to hot two and then the black right here is pinned down to the breaker box and grounded now this is an additional ground wire that goes to my ground uh bus bar over here so if you're not familiar with this we've got 120 on this side negative 120 on this side so you get split phase now if you have a regular circuit breaker it just picks up one side and you get 120 volts 
but if you have the other type of circuit breaker, you put it across two of these and you can get 240 for a well pump or something like that. I probably should have turned this off too, which I just did, but I knew it was off because my drone shut off and all the chargers stopped working too. For the circuit breakers, I don't really need to go into how to wire these. There's plenty of YouTube videos about this stuff, but basically you get a hot right here, you got a ground neutral and you run the 12-2 wire through this outlet and then you can find YouTube videos on how to wire up an outlet and like a light switch and stuff like that. All these AC wires are all 6AWG wire. And for the ground, I think it's over spec, but it's a 4AWG wire that I had laying around. So let's talk about the grounding real quick. So inside the circuit breaker, I have my ground that is connected to the circuit breaker. It runs down and jumps into the ground bus bar. The ground bus bar is also connected right over here to the ground side of the grow watt. Because the negative side of the grow watt is connected to the ground bus bar, that means the negative side of my battery bank is also connected to the ground bus bar. Now the last thing is this four AWG wire that is connected and this physically runs through the wheel well into a ground rod that is jammed into the ground. That's my off-grid electrical system. Please subscribe because my next video is gonna be a cost breakdown of everything that I spent on that system. I kept track of it all and I'll break it down to the nitty gritty. Also subscribe because I am building a 20 by 40 cabin right here in this site as soon as my permit's clear. I've got everything ready to go. I've got my backhoe to dig. I've got power out here. I've even got some materials delivered for the footer foundation. And as soon as my permit's clear, I'm gonna start building this thing. I am so ready to build this. Please like the video, drop me a comment, say what's up. I love you, have a good day, bye.